In this video, I'm going to look at the question of whether ESP or TLIP blocks are the preferred option for paraspinal blocks for analgesia in spine surgery. ESP blocks are undoubtedly effective in spine surgery as they will consistently block the dorsal rami of spinal nerves that innervate the vertebra in the back. In addition, we have extensive cranial and caudal spread through the paraspinal muscles from a single injection point, which means that we can cover multiple vertebral levels with a single injection, and also that we can perform injections or even leave catheters distant from the surgical site and still have an analgesic effect. And since 2020, we've seen the publication of at least 11 RCTs in lumbar or thoracal lumbar spine surgery, as well as two respectable retrospective case control studies not to mention numerous case reports and case series. The findings are remarkably consistent to date. The feasibility of the technique is clear, with most studies performing it after induction of general anesthesia, after surgical positioning in the prone position. And all of the studies show statistically significant and clinically significant reduction in, in pain scores over at least the first 12 to 14 hours, consistent with the anticipated durations of the block. And in some cases, pain scores are lower for up to 36 hours suggesting a preemptive analgesic benefit. Almost all of them demonstrate reductions in cumulative opioid and rescue analgesic requirements for at least 24 hours, and in some cases, even 48 hours. This is accompanied by large reductions in opioid-associated adverse effects such as pruritus, and most importantly, nausea and vomiting even in the presence of antiemetic therapy. Patients are able to mobilize earlier, probably related to the reductions in pain on movement, not just at rest, and overall, there's higher patient satisfaction when ESP blocks are administered. I also want to highlight this retrospective case control study from France, which focused on patients undergoing percutaneous arthrodesis of lumbar spine fractures. What's notable about this study is that the control group received postoperative muscular infiltration with 30 mils of 0.375% of ropivacaine, whereas the ESP group had preoperative blocks with the same volume and dose. Pain scores were significantly lower in the ESP group for up to 9 hours after surgery, and there was a corresponding reduction in opioid requirements. This suggests two things to me. First, there is a preemptive benefit to pre-incisional regional anesthesia, and second, that ESP blocks are not just ultrasound-guided wound infiltration. Rather, they are a superior alternative. Now, lumbar ESP blocks in spine surgery not only improve analgesic outcomes, they also produce clinically meaningful differences in quality of recovery scores, as demonstrated by this RCT from, from Professor Donald Buggy's group in Dublin. What's especially illuminating is reporting of the scores for the individual questions on the QR15 metric. And these are rated on a 0 to 10 scale, with 0 being bad and 10 being good. Here I've presented the elements for which statistically significant differences were found, and I think we can all agree that they are very important and meaningful patient-centered outcomes, especially this one. And all of them are clearly impacted by the quality of analgesia. But I'll confess that the one doubt in my mind is still the risk that we may see a degree of motor block with lumbar ESP blocks, given the fact that there clearly must be a degree of spread to the lumbar nerve roots that accounts for its apparent efficacy in hip surgery. What's reassuring is that there has been no evidence of any clinically significant motor block yet in any of the lumbar spine RCTs. However, in a setting where electrophysiological monitoring is being used, particularly if motor function is a critical element, I'm currently still inclined to be a little bit cautious. So we do have an alternative technique to the ESP block in lumbar spine surgery, the thoracal lumbar interfascial plane or TLIP block. And this is a superficial injection between the multivitous muscle, MF, and the longissimus thoracis muscle, LT. Local anesthetic spreads in the plane between these muscles to reach the branch point of the dorsal rami, but also to span several vertebral levels. A modified TLIP block has also been described in which the injection is more lateral between longissimus and iliocostalis lumborum, IL, which produces a similar spread and effect. And because the primary site of injection and deposition of local anesthetic in the TLIP block is somewhat further away from the lumbar nerve roots and plexus compared to the ESP block, the degree of conduction block at these structures is likely to be less marked. And some authors have suggested that there is thus less risk of inadvertent, clinically apparent sensory and motor block of the lower limbs. 
Despite all this, I will say that based on my own experience with the ESP block in thoracic spine surgery, as well as the literature on lumbar ESP blocks in lumbar spine surgery, I think that neuromonitoring in spine surgery is still generally feasible in the presence of paraspinal blocks. It's possible that there may be some attenuation of the baseline signals, but signal changes due to intraoperative events will still be detectable and can be acted upon. But if you were trying to decide between the TLIP or lumbar ESP block, you might ask, was there a difference in efficacy? There are currently two RCTs that examine this question, comparing both blocks to a control group, but in different types of surgery, one in lumbar fusion of two to three levels and one in a single level disectomy with hemilaminectomy. Both trials clearly show that the analgesia was significantly better in patients who received either block compared to the control group. However, Wang and colleagues found that the lumbar fusion patients had better pain scores at rest. This may suggest then that the ESP block could be more appropriate in more major surgery, perhaps because the deeper injection closer to the nerve roots and bony structures results in a denser block. However, I think we clearly need more studies before we can make any definitive statements on the relative superiority of one technique over the other.